Yo, uh, I recorded this interview with my friend Steve Gentili. Uh, first, about a minute got cut off. Um, although it was just uh, introducing him. Uh, he's my friend uh, Steve. I met uh, in a gym at my school uh, training and I saw this guy uh, could bench more than I could squat and <laughs> still can definitely without my ACL injury. Steve is a power lifter with nearly a 2200 total, around an 800 deadlift, uh, six, uh, almost a 600 bench, and uh, no matter what he's achieved in all of this, he still stays uh, very humble and is willing to share what he's learned with people that are willing to listen and uh, not think that it was easy. Um, he's taken a long road and faced many injuries um, to get to his point of being an elite power lifter. And I wanted to talk with him and uh, give some insight from another perspective on different injuries and how to overcome them as I'm overcoming my ACL injury. Well, I hope you enjoy the interview. Uh, Steve, thanks again uh, for the chance to do this. And after the interview, I'll include a couple clips of me uh, attempting a personal record bench press attempt uh, with my ACL. So I thought I would not be able to get close to my previous PR uh, with my knee uh, being out because I don't have any leg drive. However, uh, Steve showed me some things. I got to use his wide bench and uh, I did pretty well. So, uh, yeah, check that out. Thanks. For, so since then, you've become an elite power lifter. Yeah. Um, opened up your own private training gym in Southern California, uh, which I'm at right now. Uh, come by Hybrid Fitness. Thanks, <laughs> uh, So right now, uh, Steve knows that I tore my ACL and MCL uh, not too long ago. And I'll be out from a lot of leg training and squatting uh, for almost a year. And I thought I would interview guys that I know that love the barbell um, to hear about any injuries they've overcome that were uh, serious to an extent. Uh, Steve's played football and overcome things, and you said you had eight surgeries? Yeah, eight, eight orthopedic surgeries. <laughs> wow. I had a couple other, um, like I had a hernia when I was a little kid and some other things, but eight orthopedic surgeries due to sports. Okay. And so what was the biggest one you ever had to overcome um, that was the most difficult in length, time, mentally? Well, it's actually uh, similar to you, but it was, it, it, it's really two injuries around the same time period. So I had torn my meniscus and my PCL in one instance, and it was, uh, and, and strained the MCL. I didn't get a complete tear like you, but um, a similar injury to my left knee. And during that time, I was playing football, and it was mid-season, so it was like the third game of the season, I think, out of a 10-game se season in JUCO, but I was working on getting a scholarship, so it's all about stats and game film. So I couldn't be out very long, and I was rehabbing that pretty hard. Um, but the, the, the mental side of like not really, not really knowing where that would lead me or like what kind of opportunities I was going to miss from that, but I was just working really hard. I couldn't squat and ended up getting getting a preferred walk-on with UCLA and the coach winning the coaches over over there um, by getting into my last game at the JUCO I was at and then putting up some stats. It wasn't really a, a great game, but it was good enough, you know. But my first week at UCLA, I ended up tearing my Achilles tendon. So it was like the, the knee injury, Rehabbing that, seeing like, not really knowing if I was going to play football to a career-ending injury. Because at that point I was 25 years old and gave football a second chance in, in my later tw or my earlier 20s, and then you know after that injury it was over. So it was really like messing up the knee, rehabbing that Achilles injury, and then um, that was uh, that was pretty devastating for me, losing football. Uh, couldn't couldn't lift weights with my legs, and kind of like you being away from squats for eight years, uh, so I mean eight months. It was the better half of a year rehabbing my knee, and then the Achilles that next spring. I was away from the, the barbell for two years, 
I couldn't do a squat. And then going back to it, I had to teach myself how to squat again because it was um, my anatomy changed. Like my, my Achilles on the side is shorter than the Achilles on that side, so I can't move it and I lost a lot of mobility and range of motion in that. So I had to, I had to teach myself how to squat again with, the, with that new injury. So, um, but I mean, it was, it was harder for me uh, because of the football and stuff, and there's some other things going on with my family. Like, I, I think me and you have talked about before, I lost my sister at the, during that time in a car crash, and my mom actually went stage four with, uh, with cancer. So, it was all these things happening in the short period of time that presented a very big challenge for me. And this took me to a dark spot. Like, I'm not really a drinker, but I got into alcohol, and I was kind of doing... Um, making bad decisions, wasn't going to class, kind of giving up on stuff. You know, I didn't have football, I wasn't training, so it was not really knowing what I want, was going to do with myself. And then I found APU, um, I, I found powerlifting, and everything's kind of turned out, turned out good over time. But it was a good portion of a year where it took me to get through that. Well, um, see, what's one lesson in that that you think you learned from tearing your Achilles and going to that dark place and having to overcome it? it it's funny. It, you just said it right there, overcome it. And it's, it's funny that you should say that because uh, at my first powerlifting event ever, like I, I found my buddy now, Adam, who I trained with, and I, I did my first workout with him, and I tore my bicep. So it was like injury after injury, surgery after surgery, then I tore my bicep, I'm under the knife again, but I wasn't, I didn't go to that dark spot because I had already been there before. And I knew going through that stuff, like I could get over anything. And it doesn't matter how bad things get because you you know like the true test of who you are is when you're in those in those rougher times. And like, yeah, I wasn't proud of the decisions I made, but I learned from them. And like, I know now that if I can get through that and get to where I am now, there's nothing else that can stop me. There's no, no obstacle that I can't overcome. There's uh, been some serious character building. Yeah, and I think truly, like everybody needs to face adversity at one point in their life. Sure. And, and or else, you know, you ride a little too high on your ego. I'm not saying that was you at all, but um, you've always been a very humble guy. But oh, dealing with something like this is is very much a character building. But also facing the adversity and knowing and, and kind of testing yourself, so to speak. And we do that spiritually, we do that emotionally, but to do it physically just brings all those other aspects more prominent in, in your life. Yeah, some of those things I didn't even, uh, didn't expect you to say, just kind of the overcoming overall, or learning from that. Because yeah. I'm looking for other lessons besides strictly just overcoming an injury. I'm right. trying to find anything that I can. I look at you and I, kn I knew that you tore your bicep. And I said, I tore my knee, he's come back, and he's now an elite powerlifter. So I can come back if I'm 21 and I can, I know I can come back. So no, yeah. Because the men around you, if, if they don't give up and they go through their adversity, that gives me something to hold on to. And knowing, me knowing guys like you that don't just give up and start drinking, like 90% of my friends that say lose football or lose something in their life go to that and they never try to reach those goals that they set out right where i never really considered powerlifting doing an event um until i really met you where i was just kind of in there where when i finished football i came into the gym and i said what am i doing here right you know and he's like what am i even training for i'm not thinking about my rival team anymore i'm not thinking about um, trying to get to X, Y, and Z college. Am I just in here to look good? And that's, I, besides competing in bodybuilding, like just to look good, I feel like is just useless. Yeah. I and agree, man. seeing your drive to just go in the weight room, you do your sets and you leave and you, you have purpose behind it, that, that meant a lot to me. And in every injury I've faced in the last three years, you know, to be honest, Steve, like I thought, 
he's overcome that, and he's been in darker places that I ha that I have ever been in my life. So I can do it too. And to so many people, like trying to lift a certain weight is asinine. It's just stupid. Right. They don't get it. Right. And I don't need other people to get it, you know, because I know there. Are, and those type of people never will, man. And it's they never will get it. Because um, it's not, you're not doing it for someone else, ever. You're not, you're not doing it really for even just a record because you know it'll one day be broken. Yeah. It's, it's just for yourself and that strength and it's almost that you know you can, so you're going to try. And or, it's like what we were talking about earlier, and it, 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 you try not, and it's very hard not to, but you try not to compare yourself to other people and yeah, you set these records that will be eventually broken by other people, but it, it's that fight against yourself in order to be the best version of yourself. So like, yeah, that record might be broken, but if you could go back and break the, that record that you set yourself and get stronger from there. Like you, you got an injury now and you're telling me what your best bench is, but being able to focus on that now and, and just trying to better yourself, like it gives you purpose. And, and I don't think that everybody needs that, but we try to we try to succeed in different aspects of life, you know. Like you try to try to get be a better person all the way around. At least I do. You know, whether that's um, setting goals for yourself as far as what you want to do as in in the business world, what you want to do spiritually, how you're going to reach people emotionally, like whatever those things are. But going out every day with a purpose to succeed in those. So. What is it that you can do during this time? Like you said, you're looking for other things outside of the physical realm in order to, to find a lesson. You know, when you're when you're disabled, it's those things kind of present themselves. And I don't mean that they're more present. It's just you're more. How do you say it? Like you, you they're more visible to you. Sure. Because you, you're spending a little bit less time on those other things. Thanks a lot. Yeah. For sharing. Um, I just pulled Steve back here um, just to ask him what he thought about injuries at East Space. So uh, I thank you. Yeah, of course, man, anytime. Thank you. <laughs>one morning I became different. No warning, I was sewing with no plane ticket. So strong, I could throw cards like the game when it pitch. A plane ticket with a train with his brakes missing. Now I'm flying Mach 5 like a day tripping. And I love this rhyme scheme, so I ain't switching. I'ma start small, maybe save a stray kitten. And slap every cat, call it at the graves women. I teleport the drug sellers to the outside. And keep another young mind away from pain sniffing. I take the medicine away from the housewives. And give the pain pills back to the pain stricken. I rebuild the city soon. As a quake hit it And fix the next town over Why the pain's dripping Hold a globe on my back Fuck a weight limit But it don't matter to me If my lowest lane's missing